Hey, Ben. Jay. How you guys doing? Hey, Dave. What you doing, man? Hey, guys. What's up? I'm down here at my new place in Virginia, and I'm still kind of building the shop. But um, well, I was thinking, you know, we've got this downtime between shooting the show. It might be fun to do a little challenge among the three of us. Me challenge Ben, Ben challenge Jay, Jay challenge me, something like that. So one person finishes and then challenges the next one. Sounds good to me. So what I thought was that we'll do a home build. You know, we're always making the Smiths do this. So I figure, let's do one. Let's show off what we can do. See if I can remember how. <laughs> Get all the rust off my anvil. <laughs> so no, well, what I was thinking, we'd do it a little bit differently. We'll give each other two weeks to complete the challenge. I know that's a little longer than we usually give the Smiths, but I figure let's do something kind of outside our normal comfort zone. Do something, you know, a little bit more above and beyond. All right. Works for me. Okay. Ben, you're always talking about the Sutton Who sword. You even told me that you saw it in the museum in England. Absolutely, yeah. Look, I know it's an incredibly intricate sword, but you're always saying how you wanted to do one, and, and now's the perfect chance. Oh, no. In two weeks, make a Sutton Who sword. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Ben's going to be switching over to makeshift for a couple weeks. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave. Found in the burial ground of Sutton Who in modern-day Suffolk, England, the sword was presumably wielded by King Redwald in the early 7th century. The blade features intricate made pattern welding, twisting steel and wrought iron to create a unique Damascus pattern, while the handle itself was just as elaborate and was inlaid with gold and garnet. Over 1,300 years later, the sword was painstakingly recreated by Scott Langton and is now on display alongside the original in the British Museum. Look, you're always saying how much you love that sword, but hey, it's gonna be fun, and we gotta test them. So, uh, Ben, figure out how you're gonna test that sword and what you wanna test it on, okay? Sounds okay. good. Have fun, man. I'll see you in two weeks, okay? Two weeks. I think I'm gonna <laughs> mutter about you a lot in the next two weeks, but uh, <laughs> thanks, I better get to work. In this build, my reputation is on the line, not globally, but within the three of us. So I wanna make sure I impress everybody. I'm gonna start by making my eight bars, which is gonna be high layer Damascus, and then I'll draw those out into these rods. Then I'm gonna twist and stop twisting, and twist it and stop twisting. Then comes the four twirling, four together this way, the other four together this way, except the top where they're twisted, the bottom are straight. Then weld those layers together for the twisted core, then makes a head steel by making an extra stack. Draw it out and wrap that all the way around the end, and then forge weld that whole thing together. Well, guys, it's been two weeks, and, uh... Here it is. Sutton Who sword. That is gorgeous. Look at that pattern. Wow, Ben, that sword looks beautiful. The dimensions, that thing looks huge. Not the most uh, wow. nimbly weighted sword in the world. It'll kick some butt, that's for sure. So the plan is to test for uh, strength on some bamboo. And then for sharpness, I have a whole lot of shipping boxes lying around. So I set one up here. I'm going to see if I can't cut it in half. Make it easier to get in the recycling bin. <laughs> I'm actually nervous about the testing. This is a long, very complex welded sword. Things might let go. I don't want to break this thing. It took forever. All right, man. Good luck. Thanks, man. Here we go. Oh, man, that's great. The edge held up all right. Everything's still right and tight. So now let's see how sharp the thing is. Oh! Well, there it is. Good job, man. That's incredible. That's a good job, Ben. Thank you, man. So yeah, now it's your turn, eh, Jay? All right, what do you got for me? How about you make me a chopper out of material you've never used before? You know, it's funny you mention that because there is a few different materials that I haven't tried yet that I've been wanting to. And then I want you to go like full Nielsen on this thing and test it as hard as you can on some of the most devastating test media that you have. I could do that. Because if I don't do a serious strength test, the fans are gonna crucify me for all the blades <laughs> I've broken and damaged. So yeah, I'm gonna go hog wild on this thing, no doubt there. But I'm pretty sure we're all gonna love watching this. All right, I'll get to it. Good luck to you, brother. I'm here in my own shop in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. Ben did a great job on his weapon, and I'm planning on doing something just as good. I am fortunate enough during this home build to have my very lovely wife being my camera person and audio person. 
Your eyes are looking like they're up in the ceiling. Look down. I'm right. looking right at that little thing. I'm just telling you. I want look. a new camera person. She'll actually get to see what I do, even though we've been together for 11 years. <laughs> I think she spent an hour in my shop in the whole 11 years. So Ben challenged me to use steels I haven't used before. So what I'm planning on doing is making canister out of drive chain and powdered steel, and then I'll peel the can off, slice it in half, and then sand my it to a piece of 80 CRV too. Which we've seen quite a few Smiths use under finale weapons, but I actually haven't had a chance to use it yet. Hey guys, it's been two weeks and I'm back. Hey. Well, hey Jay, did you have fun? I had a blast. So here's my sand my chopper. It's uh, just under a 13 inch cutting edge. The core is ADCRV2, new steel for me to play around with. And I took some drive chain and made a canister Damascus, and that's what I clad on both sides of the core. How'd you like that Ultrax? The Ultrax is nice. It gives you a really good grip. Cool. And I did a little work for a meat pack and plan a while back, and they were nice enough to give me these lovely bison jaw bones. <laughs> I've got two of them strapped to the table over there. <laughs> well, that looks like some pretty brutal material, Jay. Good luck with it. Let's have some fun. Remember, Jay, it's not what your blade does to those bison bones, but what those bison bones do to your blade. Well, hopefully neither of them do anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about ready to chop into some bison jaw bones. And God, I hope this thing doesn't break in half. I'm gonna look like an idiot. <laughs> well, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. That worked pretty good. Whoa. Wow. That was wicked. Well, she's still tight, straight, no damage to the edge, and still sharp. Well, Jay, you really knocked that out of the park, man. Nice job. Good job, man. Appreciate it. All right, Mr. Baker. I got a challenge for you, bud. Oh, boy. Now I'm on the chocolate lock. OK. All right, what's the challenge going to be? If you remember, we had somebody come on the show and do a Scottish basket hilt that really tore my wrist up and sent me to the ER. Scale and all that stuff is one of your things. So make me a Scottish basket hilt that won't tear somebody's arm up. <laughs> OK, all right, I'm down for that. The basket hilt originated in Scotland in the 17th century and include an intricate enclosed guard intended to protect the user's hand. Although primarily used for defense, the basket hilt also had the ability to punch. The importance of properly designing the basket hilt is crucial in crafting a safe and effective weapon, as seen in previous forged and fire competition when a design flaw injured Jay's wrist. That sounds like a good challenge, Dave. It's gonna be really important that I get the scale, the weight, and the balance right, because I'm gonna be doing the testing and I really don't want a handbreaker. Looking forward to it. Well, okay, I guess it's my turn to head into the shop. I will see you guys in two weeks. I'm here at my new place on the northern neck of Virginia. My barn there is my workspace. I'm about, you know, one third the way through building my new shop space here. So as though self-shooting from home isn't uh, enough, I've actually got large pieces of equipment being delivered while I'm trying to do this. Jay has challenged me to make a Scottish basket hilt. My goal is to get this as historically accurate as I can. The blade is a very straightforward broadsword blade. So it'll have double edges and a deep fuller down the center. It's the guard itself that becomes difficult. Getting that dimension and scale perfect. And as the historical recreation specialist on the show, it's important for me to nail it. All right, guys, been two weeks. Ta-da. There she is. Nice. Wow. Very nice. Jay, it's got a lot of protection of the hand and the wrist. But at the same time, it's not going to get bound up. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll appreciate that. And the blade itself is 1095 and 15 and 20, 300 layers. It looks great. For my test, I've got a shield. Now, this shield's been with me for like 15 years. This is a veteran of a half dozen shows. And then um, to follow that up, I'll do a sharpness test on this uh, fig branch that I just trimmed off. There you go. Good luck, brother. All right, so let's see how she does. 
Am I a little nervous? Yeah. Every time I swing a blade at something that you shouldn't swing a blade at, I get nervous. But at the same time, I'm excited. This is what I live for. This is what I love. Oh, my hand's okay. That's awesome. I like that. I was not expecting him to punch with that basket hook. <laughs> nice. You still straight? It's got an edge. Like you always say, Dave, it's cutter. <laughs> she did good. She held up. Good job, nice man. job. Thanks. So, hey, guys, it was really fun seeing your work and, and, and seeing you guys test that stuff at home. I'm looking forward to doing it again if your guys are up for it. But uh, that was a great, great challenge. Y'all did beautiful work. I'm really impressed. You guys take care. Later. Bye.